this project, I'm going to be adding some custom cheek risers to this pl plastic uh, Savage 12 FV stock and this Boyd's laminate uh, packed cool stock. Um, neither of these really have sufficient uh, cheek weld for the height of optics that I'm us using. Normally for guns like these, the 12 FV is obviously a varmint setup. The tactical or uh, pro varmint is a varmint or, or tactical setup. Um, both of them tend to use larger scope objectives, usually in the larger than 40 millimeter range. Um, and neither one really has sufficient cheek weld or height of cheek weld to allow for good eye alignment. Now what this is going to be, most people will instantly recognize. Here's a template I've drawn up of a Karsten clone. Um, but I'm going to go over a little bit of the details on how to design one of these for your own rifle uh, and then how to translate that into the plastic material that I'll be using. As I mentioned, this uh, one for the 12FV is the most obvious uh, Karsten clone. Um, the way I've designed it is pretty simple. The top line is always going to be your comb line. Uh, that goes pretty much without saying. The bottom line, you see I've matched here to the toe line of the stock and the back line here matches the heel angle down at the bottom. That was just uh, drawn with a piece of paper that I looped over the stock. Oops, I don't have, I don't have very good alignment here. Um, that I looped over the stock and then drew in with a pencil, then went in and refined with a straight edge, as well as some curves. You have a French curve, or a uh, just a very large circle, like for the lid of a pot or a pan, you can use that to trace this angle here and keep it very smooth. Now what you want to do with this curve is match it to the angle of the grip. So you can see it sort of matches there, that they're almost parallel. The uh, curvatures here sort of expand as they go out. So it, it can be a little bit wider, but you want to keep it pretty much the same as the grip angle, or the grip arc right here. And while it would be easy to use this, and I've, like I said, this is probably the closest thing I've got to the Karsten, um, to just simply translate that down onto the Tactical or the Pro Varmint stock, you'll see it doesn't quite fit aesthetically. Um, there's a school of thought out there that, you know, if it, if it uh, works, then it doesn't matter what it looks like. And while I normally agree with that, uh, also the quality of your job should be a little self-evident. So I've come up with as another design for the Pro Varmint stock that once again was just drawn with a piece of paper over the comb and trying to trace the angles um, as best I could to match them to be aesthetically pleasing as well. I've also got, as you can see here, the layout holes for when I uh, drill and cut out the adjustment slots. Well, they are on this side of, uh, of this one. Um, but I'm going to use these to translate my design into the Kydex material that I have. Uh, I got a piece of white Kydex here from McMaster Car. They sell white, black, and gray. I'm going to use 1 8 inch thickness. Um, Karstens are a bit thicker. Um, however, I haven't found any any shortcomings with the 1 8 inch stuff um, in terms of being durable or being easy to work with. In fact, it's a little easier to work with than 3 16 um, And I, even being shot in some very cold weather, very hot weather, it's not changed dimension or become brittle. Um, They've lasted very well. This you can see is uh, one example of a completed cheek riser that I made uh, using the Pro Varmint pattern. Uh, this one was made out of black Kydex uh, that I painted with a dark camouflage. The reason I'm going to be using white in this project is to match the lighter pattern on the Coyote laminate pattern that Boyd's has uh, made this stock in. But the next step is going to be translating the, the design onto the plastic. Now when you get your sheet of Kydex, it's going to have two sides. One of them is the textured side, it's going to be the outside, or the uh, the top, of our cheek rest. And then the untextured side, the smooth side, which is a lot glossier, you can see. When I go, when I start laying things out, I'm going to use the glossy side. It's going to bounce my pencil around less, the pencil marks are still visible. Don't know how visible that is. It'll be visible to you when you're actually doing it yourself. Um, what I've got is my template already laid out. I've got it taped in position, just with some clear tape. I've taped it across the straight edges. That's going to make it easier for me to connect the uh, the gaps with a straight edge later on. Um, I've also got it set up so that this flat edge is along one of the flat sides. 
or one of the one of the edges of the actual piece of plastic. That's going to save me some cutting later on. On this template, you can see it doesn't have that straight edge back here. It's an angle, um, so it either have to be with one edge laid up to it or the other. However, I'm going to take my pencil and trace. we go. And then, as I said, I also have my layout holes for where I'm going to drill. And then to uh, cut the slots for adjustment, I'm going to use my center punch and mark these holes. that layout line is showing up for you. Um, but you can see the gaps where the scotch tape was. Uh, I'm just going to fill those in with a straight edge. And then I've got these. Yeah, those aren't showing up. But the center punch marks are also in place, getting ready for me to drill those out with a quarter inch drill bit. Okay, and here we are so far. Uh, you can see I've got it cut out and profiled. I've got the holes drilled. These are quarter inch holes. If need be, I can make them larger using another drill bit or uh, just with a hand file. Speaking of which, I've already got them connected with some pencil lines here. I don't know how well those are showing up. But uh, pencil lines between each of the holes, um, one on each side. I'm going to use my cutout tool to knock out most of that and then flush everything up just with a wood rasp and hand file. And here we have the uh, almost finished product. Um, it was drilled with the quarter inch holes, and once again I connected them using my cutout tool. Um, for the most part, I just got the bulk of the material out of there with the cutout tool. The rest of it I just cleaned up with some metal files and wood rasps. Um, Kydex is really easy to work with. Pretty much any woodworking tool you have uh, will cut this uh, no problem. Uh, not it, it either damaging to the plastic nor to the tool. Uh, one thing I will state is that uh, around the edges where I've sanded it got a little discolored. Um, Using a sanding belt moving too quickly will start to melt the plastic and turn it black. It'll also pick up any sort of uh, residue that's on the sandpaper, so use a clean belt when you're going to sand this. Um, but now all that's left is for me to bend this. I'm going to use a custom-made mold I have. I say custom-made. It's just a piece of 2x6, or excuse me, 2 by probably 10 um, that I've got a simple radius on. It's actually an inch and a half dowel. Uh, which is just the same size as the 2 by, two by whatever this is, uh, is in width. It's been screwed down and then filled along the side with urethane foam. I've got some foil over top of it. On the other side, I've got a more bull-nosed or oval-shaped um, profile, and that's going to be for the one I'm using with the 12FV stock, because it's got a more oval profile itself. But that's going to be coming up next. Uh, I'm going to be using an auxiliary toaster oven rather than any food toaster oven I have in the kitchen. Uh, mostly that's for safety's sake. Um, if you have a toaster oven you can keep out in the garage, that's probably your best bet for something like this, as well as any other sort of plastic heating project. While I'm waiting for the Kydex to cool, um, I'm going to lay out the holes I'm going to drill in the stock for the adjustment screws. Uh, this is my template. The piece of paper that was on top fell off. Um, but I'm going to punch the same holes I did earlier, um, just the top ones this time, because I'm going to allow the, that's going to allow the Kydex to slide up, which is what I'm after. 
but just use my center punch. Now when I go to drill this on my drill press, I'm going to drill from one side and then also from the other. That's going to allow for the most assured clearance of the screws once I install them. Alright, so the holes have been drilled. Uh, once again, I started out with a quarter inch drill bit on both sides, meeting in the center, and then connected them with a 5 16 drill bit. Uh, just handheld from both from just one side to connect it make sure all the all the internal stuff um, any mismatch was taken up but the install just slides over top take a quarter inch carriage bolt these are quarter inch 20 threads uh, doesn't really matter what thread they are just as long as they're at least two inches long and for uh, for this application two and a quarter inches long or perhaps two and a half inches long would be better these are some phenolic thumb nuts with brass insert. Um, a washer would be a good choice to put underneath the uh, the thumb nut. I don't have any on me. And these are a little short. That's why I say two and a quarter would be a better choice than just two inch uh, in terms of, of the length of the carriage bolts. Then yeah, you can adjust it as you need. Make sure it's parallel to the comb. There we go. Nice rugged piece. Um, it's not going to shift around too much at all if you've got it tightened down all the way. Oops, that one was not tightened down all the way. And uh, yeah, it's a really good adjustment, uh, really good way to be able to adjust the stock to your personal needs. Um, this one is in a, in a state that I would consider done, although I'm going to take it off and repaint it to match the colors of the stock. But if you have any questions on this project, uh, please leave me a message here or contact me any, uh, any other way that uh, you know how. And uh, thank you very much for watching.